Hello. Hey, Harsha, can you hear me? Uh, Hello. Hey, folks. Uh, we'll begin very shortly. I think uh, just wait a couple of minutes for a few people to turn up uh, from my team as well. And then uh, we'll begin. Hey folks, so just waiting uh, for a few more minutes and we will then begin our workshop on modernizing development and activating your legacy uh, databases or data using GraphQL. Cool, so I'm going to uh, just start with some context here uh, and this is going to be a very very hands-on uh, workshop basically you can try it out as well from the from the github uh, repository that i've shared that i'm sharing on the screen right now uh, but it's uh, totally cool if you just uh, want to follow me while i while i do uh, do the things and uh, you can go back and uh, follow the same uh, workflows or uh, or you can just understand the various concepts that we are going to be touching that GraphQL, uh, along with Hasura, can uh, help you provide in your organization. So yeah, so a little bit of a uh, little bit of context uh, here uh, for the workshop is basically that one of the biggest challenges with modernizing applications is that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of time and effort is spent in doing the simple things like getting data from your database because the data data itself is like sprawled across your entire organization it could be uh, in some table in database a and some of the data that you need might be in some other database uh, so you need to like set up a lot of uh, connections and you need to set up, uh, you also need to have a lot of visibility into what kind of data is published and how you can access them easily. So this is fundamentally the, the game that GraphQL tries to change where the, where you, you as a consumer will get to see 
the entire data which is published in the GraphQL API across your organization, right? So you set up this infrastructure once, and how how much ever you change uh, your data models or whatever you the new things that you add uh, to your data infrastructure, if you have a GraphQL layer uh, which is exposing this back to the consumer, there is absolutely no uh, uh, bottleneck or there is absolutely uh, there are no pro this no the, the the ease with which you can consume data is like immense as opposed to rest apis where you will have to set up some extra tooling to kind of publish what apis you have and how to access them and so on with graphql it's all built in as as the technology it has the capability to like expose the entire uh, apis uh, uh, very easily and it has like inbuilt documentation so you can also while you're coding the apis just annotate a few fields and that becomes part of your graphql schema natively and then there are a few other things that we may touch upon in this workshop which is related to like deprecation and so on the and the end result is that the api consumer experience is so much better than what you may have in a in a legacy infrastructure uh, that uh, th that the speed in development, the developer happiness is like an order of magnitude more, right? So that is what we want to show in this uh, workshop as well. And with that, I will begin uh, following the the GitHub repository that I have here. And uh, so so the first thing here is how to get started with a GraphQL layer, right? And this is what Hasura provides. So Hasura is, let me just show you here. Hasura is basically a GraphQL, an instant GraphQL layer. So if you have any data source uh, by any, I'll, I'll be more precise about any. So if you have any compatible data source, uh, let's say that for now, Hasura will give you an auto-generated GraphQL API over that, which is also secure in the sense that Hasura also has an authorization module and can integrate with authentication uh, uh, providers uh, like in any form. Like it, it can be a JWT token, it can be some other SSO token, or it can be a simple webhook based integration where everything is like proxied to, to an authentication service, which responds with uh, 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 valid or invalid token and so on, right? So that is why uh, it's also accessible from a web app on the internet. Uh, everything is consumable and secure from the get-go. So that is what Hasura uh, provides. And to start Hasura or to uh, take it for a spin, which is what we'll do here in this workshop, is that you can go to cloud.hasura.io, which is something I'm going to do now. And you may be prompted to log in and so on. I have already logged in. So I am just going to do the next step here, which is to create a new project and also provision a free database from Heroku for the workshop. So I can uh, basically click on new project, existing database, right? You can, you can do that. You can bring the connection string and connect Hasura Cloud to that as well. Uh, but for the purposes of this workshop, we're just going to try it with Heroku and uh, deploy a new Heroku app. So here you go. So here I have got my Heroku database provisioned. It has this, uh, if you're familiar with Postgres connection string, it has this long connection string, which you can then connect to Postgres from anywhere. Uh, and I am going to create the project with this. So while this is uh, getting initialized, uh, what I'm going to do is basically bootstrap my database with some data. So, so I'm going to use psql for that. Uh, so let me come back here and show you how that's done. Uh, I think I'll have to share my screen again so that I can share my entire screen. Just share that. Right. So I think you should be able to see my uh, terminal now. And uh, let me just expand this a bit. Uh, okay. 
Right. So I'm going to use PSQL as as shown before, and I'm going to go to. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so I have uh, my data here. So this is the Northwind data set, which is quite popular. So if you look at the DDLs here, it has few tables and so on. And the and there's another file which has the data. So it has few insert statements and so on, right? So I'm going to quickly bootstrap that. DDL. Okay. The PSQL here. So I'm just kind of bootstrapping my database using PSQL. So that, that would give us like an existing database which is connected to Hasura. And then we'll see the experience from there. I also want the data to be loaded. There you go. That's it. So I'm going to switch back to my screen with 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 my Hasura uh, project, right? So should be here. So yeah. So as we were loading the data, you would be uh, you would notice that the Hasura project is also ready. It has some data here. For example, this is the this is basically your GraphQL API URL. This is what we'll be using to like send uh, operations, uh, get data, and so on. And there is this Hasura Cloud IP, which is basically the IP of uh, this cloud Hasura. And you can kind of uh, you you can provision like VPNs and uh, or whitelist this in, on your database so that Hasura can connect to that. Uh, so. After that, there is this big button called Launch Console. And this is where you start using Hasura, which is basically a console in which you can do a lot of uh, 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 operations, admin operations. You can also uh, do operations as a, as a normal consumer. Uh, you can set up the authorization rules and permissions that we spoke about a little bit earlier. So there is this console is basically a, a GUI for all the Hasura actions that you can take and you can build your API using this console as well. So the first thing you would notice here is that there is this uh, tab called graphical. And this is where you try out your queries. So your GraphQL queries is, uh, uh, this is like, if you use Swagger, this is uh, slight, uh, similar to that. Uh, this will show all the APIs that you have. Currently, you can see in the Explorer here that I don't have, don't really have anything. Like uh, we'll see this populated in a bit. There's also the doc section here. And again, there isn't anything here. It's kind of empty. And this section is where you can kind of run your queries, uh, run, run uh, reads, writes, and all the other things. And we have a place here to like embed headers. It could be an authorization header or some role header and so on. So if you have any custom headers, you can add them here. So, so this is where you play with your GraphQL API. But first, we need to have a GraphQL API. And since we have already loaded our database with the tables that I just showed you, I can now go to the data tab and see that Hasura kind of shows that there is there are these tables available in your database. So basically what it did was it introspected the Postgres database, found out all the tables that are present, and it shows the list here. And I can start tracking them, uh, which is kind of the name that we give for basically creating a API, GraphQL API over this table. So I can start tracking them individually, or I can just track them all. So what this is doing behind the scenes is basically it's uh, looking further into the table structure and generating a GraphQL API, which conforms to that table, right? And also you would notice that as soon as we have uh, tracked these tables, they come up 
for visualization on the left side here. But you can also see that Hasura will then introspect the foreign key relationships that these tables have amongst themselves. And you can track these relationships as well. And that will become like a, like a new field, a relationship field in your GraphQL API that is generated. So in simple words, if you have a, 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 a flat table, you the GraphQL API would be simply uh, simple. I'll show you that. Uh, you simply be a, an object which has the columns as the fees. But once you have created a foreign key relationship and track that also, then you can basically uh, have another field, which is kind of the relationship field. And that relationship field itself kind of expands into uh, the other table with which the relationship was created. So I'm going to track all the relationships as well. If you have any questions so far, please feel free to ask in the chat. Right. So I've also tracked my relationships. And now I can see that I have, uh, I can also see a few other things. Like I can track custom functions. Like if you have user defined functions in your database, uh, you can track them as well. I don't have anything because this was a fresh database. Uh, so that's uh, that's empty. I have non-trackable functions. So functions need to be need to cater to uh, some spec. Uh, it has some minimum requirement that it return a table type or it return a type that Hasura understands. And since these are like Postgres functions, they don't really have uh, anything uh, conforming to a GraphQL API. So these are non-trackable. So let's close that. Right. So now that we have the tables, like I mentioned before, we should be able to see all the APIs that are available for consumption. So this is where you start running your GraphQL queries. So I'm just going to use the Explorer here and kind of just click and choose my API. Like I'm creating my API on the fly, right? So my categories table had the columns, category ID, category name, and description. So I can just kind of create that on the fly. So maybe and this is the beauty of GraphQL, right? You can just ask whatever you need, and you'll get exactly that. So for example, I don't need the description. I can just unclick that, or I can just remove that from the list here, and I'll just get the data for category ID and name. So basically, the client also defines the structure of the response that they need. Or in some sense, the input is input defines the response structure, and that's extremely convenient because the serialization and deserialization is taken care of by the GraphQL service. And you don't have to kind of mangle the data to form that you like. So, so let's, uh, yeah, so let's talk about relationships that, uh, that we also tracked. So for example, category uh, has a relationship with products, right? So uh, there's a category and there are many products inside each category. So maybe I can, uh, get the products also here. So maybe product ID, product name, quantity per unit. And I can hit run. So now you can see that the data now for each object also has a products field, which is defined here. And this is basically the relationship that uh, we tracked before. And we can see product ID, product name, and so on. So one quick thing that you would notice is that the response is really large. So you might want to like uh, start limiting the the response, right? So, for example, products maybe there's like hundreds, two hundred products. So you want to probably limit that to say ten. So as you can see, uh, each field also comes with various input arguments like limit here, and uh, we'll we'll see a lot more of that, which will let you kind of filter uh, filter on your GraphQL API just like you would filter using uh, using SQL or using some ORM or uh, using any uh, interface language to talk to data, right? So, so for example, we have limited 10 here. We can also start limiting 10 here. Uh, but maybe I just want, I just, I also want to order by this, right? Order by, uh, let's see. So I want to order by, say, categories which have the maximum products so which are, which are uh, basically ordered by the number of products so i can 
see that I have something called product aggregates here and I can say count. So this is basically going to I need to also give whether it's ascending or descending. So I'm going to say descending. So this is basically going to give me the top 10 categories according to the number of products that they have, right? And so this was kind of an order by clause that you can add to this. You can also kind of filter. Maybe instead of ordering by, I want to kind of do a where, a where clause thing. Uh, where filter here. So I can say category name. Uh, I can say is I like. So I like is case insensitive like operation. I can say, let's say all the categories will start with A, right? So I can do something like this. Let's see if I have anything here. So I don't, but I saw something that started with C. So I can see that I can do a where operation where uh, I only get categories which start with C. So that's my where filter. So that's only like two or three. Uh, so yeah, so basically you can do complex filtering. You can uh, like 80% like of what you can do in uh, a regular CRUD based filter. Uh, so that's very empirical. So yeah, so in, in if, if you have a data model which is kind of uh, well -tuned, tuned to your application, you, you can probably cover 80% of the queries with, uh, with these straightforward where clauses. And if there are like more complex operations, you can always create a function uh, over that table and track that. And inside a function, you can basically run more complex uh, operations if the GraphQL, if the native filters are insufficient for that. Uh, so before taking a quick checkpoint, I just want to show you how all this is happening behind the scenes. And that is through this analyze button here, which you have added to graphic graphical ourselves. And you would see that what's happening here is that Hasura is basically generating a SQL for the query that uh, received. It also shows the execution plan. So we can see here that it's running the I like operator here. And we should be able to see a limit 10 clause here. And there are a lot of boilerplate stuff for the auto generation aliasing and so on. And there is also a few JSON functions because the JSON uh, aggregation or the JSON serialization also happens uh, at the Postgres layer. So it's kind of pushed down to the source if the source can support such serializations so, so that you can optimize these things at the source. And uh, so yeah, this is this is how the end output looks like, which is getting executed on Postgres. So yeah, so with this, I will take a small checkpoint to see if uh, uh, people have any doubts, and then we'll move on to the next section here, which is going to talk about authorization and how uh, you can have complex rules so that you can start using the GraphQL API that was generated straight from your client apps and the client app would be agnostic to uh, uh, to other clients who are in the system and they would only be able to fetch the data that they have been uh, authorized to uh, use. So to summarize, if uh, if somebody joined in the middle, what we have done here is uh, uh, we have basically launched a Hasura project on the Hasura cloud, uh, and we have given it a database. We populated that database using our uh, our own mechanism. I used PSQL to do that. You may have an existing database, and it would also work just fine. And once you have pointed Hasura to that. Uh, you can then access the console like this, where you can uh, start playing with your GraphQL queries. Uh, the GraphQL queries come uh, come with all kinds of filters and all kinds of uh, uh, 
like it follows the entire GraphQL spec, so you can basically uh, be able to do all the things that the that the spec allows. You can limit your, you can keep changing your uh, uh, selection set. Like you can remove uh, the things that you don't need, and the data return would be without that. You can define the shape of your data. You can have relationships with other tables, and the the GraphQL API would span the relationships as well. And you can get a deeply nested. Uh, you can request for a for a deeply nested kind of a joined data on your database very easily. You can construct all this uh, uh, using tools. Like for example, I used Explorer. You you have a lot of auto completion tools and a lot of IDE integration, so that you can easily build such queries uh, uh, without like reading documentation too much or getting lost in documentation, which is the power of GraphQL. So that's what we did. Uh, so far, and uh, what we'll do next is basically we have been getting all the data in in our in our table. Of course, we have been limiting that, but that doesn't mean that it's uh, that it's hidden from certain users. So what we'll kind of do is set up role-based permissions on these uh, on on the GraphQL API, so that you only get the rows and the data that you are authorized to. And we'll start that now. So, so authorization basically in Hasura uh, is creating rules which would get embedded during the execution, right? So we saw here that uh, we create like a SQL query here, and if you have if you have set up authorization, which we'll do now, what it would end up doing is kind of like embedding over the SQL. It will kind of embed. The, the Boolean expression for the authorization rule that you need so that you only kind of see uh, rows that you have access to. So it's kind of like row level access, which is done at the Hasura layer, and which is computed at the Hasura layer, but applied by your data source. Uh, and why we do that is because you want to have these rules and these permissions span across other things that we'll see later in the workshop. Where you can be bringing in external sources like uh, other GraphQL services, or you can, you might want you might be wanting to bring uh, REST APIs uh, to join with your GraphQL API. So we need an authorization layer which kind of spans your entire GraphQL API. And uh, we although we are using Postgres database here as an example, tomorrow it could be a MySQL database, and we will also see REST APIs and other GraphQL services in in this uh, workshop itself. So to have a common layer of authorization, we we need to set up these rules at the Hasura layer. So for example, I so the example here uh, will show what we want to do. We want to set up basically three kinds of applications. We want to set up an external app where there can be a customer, there can be an order, and the order is being is being shipped by a shipper, right? And we the the rule that we want to uh, uh, execute is basically that the customer can only select their own row from the customer table, and they can only get only their orders. So from the customer table, just one row, and from the orders table, all the orders that belong to them. So this is basically the rule that we want to enforce. So let's go back to the uh, console here. And I'm doing this all from the console because it's very easy to like build this in the GUI. But you can use APIs. Uh, all all this is running through a well spec API, so you can go to the docs of Asura and see the reference APIs and do this yourself in your language or through whatever mechanism you are most comfortable with. But to get started, I think it's easiest to just use the console. Uh, so, so my first rule here said customer can select only their row in customer table. So I'm going to go to the customers table, and I'm going to go to the permissions uh, tab here. And I'm going to define a new role called customer. And I want to give uh, a select permission here, which has a check, which should say customer ID should be equal to. Uh, it can definitely say something like you. Know, it can it can be a static value. A literal value, or it can use something like this. So X Hasura 
so so all the values which are starting with x hyphen hasura they are kind of special values and they are basically placeholders for uh for values that come in from the authentication system right so in the beginning i said you can kind of integrate hasura with authentication system which means that the authentication system can basically pass in values and if these values have uh if they start with x hasura keys uh what hasura will do is that it will kind of replace the rule that it has uh with the value that came in from for that call and that's what we are going to do here so i'm just going to say x hasura customer id right so so yeah so this is the boolean expression which needs to be satisfied for me to be able to access any row in the customer table so the custom id should be equal to x hasura customer id maybe i i can also select the columns for the user that they have access to so i can be more fine grained in uh, allowing the columns but i'm going to allow all the columns for uh, our purposes and then there is also aggregations which is like do you want to allow like sum and count and max to the customer role because those could be costly operations and i'm going to save this right so now if i come back here and let me open explorer again here uh, so what uh, i i what i'm going to do is basically use this header section here to define my role as customer right and what has basically happened is that my schema has basically shrunk because now i only have access to the apis that the customer role has access to because by default any new role previously we were running as admin and that is why we were able to kind of uh, get access to all the apis but now i have kind of forced myself to become customer role and the customer role only has access to uh, the customers api and customers by pk api so like customers by primary key api and that is because we only have select permission on the on the table and we don't have any other permission so this accessor role again i have been able to like hard code that but uh, in the console here because i am a i'm an admin but ideally it should it should come from your authentication system and we will not touch upon how to integrate your authentication system with hasura in this workshop uh, but that is typically how you would do it and i also so yeah so let's let's leave this and let's try to like run a query right let's try to get my let, let's get all the customers again uh, so let's say i want to get address company name contact name title country and let's get customer id as well so it would complain that accessor customer id header is expected but not found that's because our rule reference that so let me add that here and let me give a customer id uh, so i don't know what customer ids are available in the system but if i give a customer id which probably doesn't exist because this is some other data set which is unaware of my customer name so i get no rows here so let me look up uh, a row that exists in this table uh, through the data tab here i can i can also use this as a simple uh simple cms right because i can if i don't want to use graphql api i can basically have a graphical view to insert things here but let me just pick up one customer id which exists in the table and now i can see that i have a i get one row which belongs to my customer id and i get all the details for that row which have uh, which have enabled and i i can't get any other row right so this is the power of the role based permission system you've defined a role here and the role also referenced attributes like access to a customer id and once you have a incoming query which has uh, which has these uh, session variables we call these session variables then you would then your authorization then hasura will invoke the authorization system and kind of embed the rules required to make sure that the execution respects these authorization rules so you may expect that since this is a postgres database we kind of push the authorization rule as a where filter 
into the query. So you can see that here, we kind of, uh, uh, as you can see, the customer ID equal to this thing is being auto embedded into the into the API. Previously, we saw that it only had the filters that we were adding here, but now we see the permission rules are also getting added, here, right? So that's uh, that's the first uh, permission that we wanted to add. And the second permission that we wanted to add is that the customer can get their orders as well. So let's see how that might work. Uh, so I have to go to my orders table now. And let me go to permissions. I can see that there are no permissions set for the customer role. Let me do a select permission here and say with customer check, customer ID, same thing equal to accessor or customer ID. Uh, customer ID. So it says, what all columns can I select? Uh, so I can probably select most of the columns here, but maybe I don't want to give employee ID, which is probably some backend ID. Uh, so I'll disallow that. And now if I come back to graphical, uh, so first thing that I can see is that my schema has been has added orders and orders by PK because I gave the select permission to that. And I can use my history to go back to the previous API. Let's get that. But now I can also get orders here. And I can choose what all order what all information I want from the orders table. Let's say customer ID just to cross check that we are getting this orders for the same customer ID. Let's say order date and let's say order ID. Yep, so this customer has few orders and you can see that all the customer IDs are belonging to the same customer. So, so this is uh, again the permission system working uh, across the entire graph. If you have relationships, those relationships uh, will also respect uh, uh, the, the permissions of the entire constituents of that relationship, like all the tables that belong that belong in the query. They will each have their uh, permissions rule uh, embedded and then joined together. So you get a completely secure uh, response. So that's so that's uh, so that's the gist of authorization. Uh, so there's a lot of authorization modeling that you can do here, obviously, because as you can see that all you have to do is define a lot of roles uh, or define appropriate roles, define rules for those roles. And there are or conditions and and conditions, which we haven't seen, which we haven't touched in this uh, exercise. But uh, if you go to permissions, you can, uh, uh, you can also kind of, you can see you can do any kind of join any kind of composition with and or and so on and there's this nice uh, a nice operator called exists which kind of lets you poke into some table which completely unrelated table and check out its value and see if such a value exists for example if if i have some kind of a deny table like deny list so some some customers are kind of put in the deny list so you can always kind of look up uh, that deny table check whether the check something like uh, suppose yeah suppose there is some territory that I don't want to that I don't want to allow so you can just say uh, territory ID is not equal to in this case some value like not allowed then it's going to like check whether such a such a value exists or not and if it does if it does not then uh, the permission rule is false and you don't get any data back so yeah, so there are a lot of composition. This this is a very comprehensive language, and you can build a lot of complex rules and models for your security, uh, data security, and the GraphQL API would reflect those rules automatically. So this was the this was a major part of the workshop where you kind of uh, exposed your database uh, through GraphQL by auto generating all the fields. You also embedded you also embedded security rules so that you get X so that the consumers or the clients uh, get access to only their 
particular data. So I'm going to skip few of the other exercises here. Uh, these are just other models that are interesting. Uh, for example, for an internal app, you might have uh, a more complex rule and so on. Uh, in short, the Hasura authorization system allows role-based access control and attribute-based access control, and you can compose them together. Role was in the previous exercise, role was like customer, and attribute was like access to a customer ID, and it could there could be any number of uh, attributes, and uh, you can use that to build your rules. Now we have, I think, around 10 to 15 minutes, so I'm going to quickly show you if you already have. A system where you have REST APIs, how do you bring that into your GraphQL API that you have generated uh, on your Postgres database, for example? But now you want to bring in other sources like your REST APIs or maybe some other GraphQL API which some team has independently created, or it could be some other uh, service which provides a GraphQL API, right? So, how do we do that? So, the first thing to uh, uh, for the first part would be how to bring your REST API, which is through something called actions. So let's go back to our uh, console over here. And we can head to the Actions tab. And here, what uh, what Hasura is kind of doing is allowing you a way to define your own types and fields for the, for the API that you want to expose. And this is combined with the auto-generated API. So for example, I want to create something like a login mutation. Because login requires a lot of custom business logic, and what we saw before was kind of a SQL uh, compilation, like a like a like a uh, GraphQL to SQL mapping. But you might want to do some custom business logic, which is in your REST API. So what you can do is basically def basically simply define the schema. So you can say, okay, I have a login. Uh, I want to call the mutation login, and I want to give it username. As input, and I also want to give it a uh, password as input, right? And so, sample output. Uh, okay, let's we can leave that as as it is. And here, so what does sample output mean? Okay, let's change that to maybe login output to, for clarity. And we have to define login output here. So I'm going to define login output here in the types field. So this is all GraphQL spec. So this is this is basically the GraphQL SDL, as they call it. Uh, and this is how you define your fields. And this is how you define your types. And I'm going to remove this because I don't need that here. Oh, I've written input here, but it should be string. So yeah, so this is what my field definition looks like. Basically, it's called login. It takes two inputs, username, which is string, password, which is string, and the response that it ex that it, the response that it has is basically of type login output, and login output is basically an object which has a field called access token. So a lot of words here, but I think once we see it in action, it will be very clear as to what's happening. Uh, so this we have only defined the schema, but we also need to define the business logic or where it's actually resolved. So I I can give a REST endpoint here. And this is this is basically how you bring your REST API. So you can bring your REST API and give the URL here. So I have a REST API deployed on Glitch. So let me show you that. So Glitch is basically an online coding platform. Very easy to like show things on Glitch. So, for example, we have a Hasura Actions demo. Here. Let me just show the source. So, in ServiceJS, I can see that I have, say, a REST API like this, which takes slash login uh, uh, at the slash login uh, path. It is going to kind of get the input from the from the request the body of the request and you can do your business logic and kind of return the access token which is conforming to the shape that you had defined in the schema so i'm going to quickly add this as the resolver it was called slash login and there are a few attributes here like synchronous asynchronous we'll skip 
all those and just create this right and now if i come back to my graphical i have this rule hasura so i can also make that accessible the action can also be made part of the role based system so i, I want to say that uh, role has, role customer has access to this field and now if i look at my explorer let me close this so these are queries so i can go to mutations now and i can see i have login mutation here so this is what we had defined ourselves it takes a uh, username password so let me just say tiru my password is obviously tiru and the return type was access token so let me see that so yes so i get the response also this was a very trivial example where it kind of returns the a static access token but you can do all kinds of things here because it's your rest api and you can give a response which is suitable for the input that you receive so this was uh, basically a very short demo on how to use uh, actions of course you can also use that for queries if you have read apis then you can uh, def we defined this in mutations but you can as well uh, define this in queries by just changing this to query that would also work uh, so one interesting thing that you can uh, see is also that you can create action relationships with your actions so that something which is coming from your rest api can be joined with something that is already existing in your table for example uh, i can basically define it's a, if it's an object or a, or a list relationship i can give it some name some uh, action relationship uh, and then i can choose kind of like the table that i want to join this with so for example uh, the access token that i received probably is it's not the best example here but maybe it belongs to some employee right so i can choose access token being joined with something like uh something like employee id it's not going to work i think because such data will not exist but because the types match you, you still can uh create a relationship and now if i kind of uh oh so another thing i want to quickly do is basically give read permissions on the employees table for customer role but i can also kind of remove the rules and become an admin and if i do that i will see that my relationship is also exposed now and i can kind of get all the other information from the relationship so this relationship is coming from the table so that's pretty cool so yeah so so the join did not work because even though the access token was string which is an acceptable format from a postgres literal value point of view but kind of can't coerce that to small int so it throws an error uh so that was actions we saw how you can bring your rest apis define a schema on top of that give it permissions and create relationships we can also bring in and this is the final part we can also bring in some custom graphql service which is already existing so for that i also have a service already deployed here and this is just some other hasura uh deployment on some other database right and this has other tables it has tables like actor album category customer okay there are a few things which are basically common so maybe i will need to kind of uh drop or untrack them let me quickly do that so for example i can track so i'm untracking some tables here because i think i have populated the same data set here and there will be type conflicts when i try to merge which also you can kind of customize but for the interest of time i'm going to just untrack them so that we don't get uh so that we don't get any type conflicts so employee i think is also the same thing so let me just uh, untrack this so i think the other things are all related to other data set so it should be fine so i can come back to remote schema so give it a name let me call this media schema so this is fine. give it the graphql url 
as simple as that, and remote schema. So now if I come back to my Explorer, I can see that I have new fields here like actor. And if I add this as query, I can see I have actors and actor aggregate, which I did not have previously because this is coming from my remote schema. So I'm going to probably start querying from here. So I want to query actor. And maybe I want actor ID, first name, last name. Probably limit it to 10 and run. So as you can see, now I am basically getting data from my remote schema. And that also kind of works really nicely. And you would now kind of wish that you could join the table that you have uh, in the first database to the, to the table that you have in the other database over which Hasura is also installed. So we can do that as well. So let's see how. So for example, uh, maybe employees in our organization are actually uh, actors. Uh, this is like a film management system. And, uh, you want to join employees with their actor IDs, which is in the other database. So I can go to relationships here. These are already relationships with foreign keys in the same database. And I have remote schema relationships here. So I can give that a name. For example, my acting profile. And I can choose the remote schema, which is the media schema here. And I can say actor. Uh, I can say where actor ID is equal to employee ID. So this is kind of a join mapping that you're providing at the GraphQL layer from, from a GraphQL interface point of view. And I've basically said that join this according to this rule, which is that uh, which is that when I'm when I'm when I'm kind of creating this relationship, what this relationship basically is made of is that the employee ID value, which is coming from a table, is also injected as the where uh, actor ID equal to input argument from a remote schema. So if that was a little complex, let's. Uh, so it says this is int and that is small int. Uh, we kind of expected that, but it's uh, very easy to like uh, go and change that here. So I'm just going to modify my actor ID to become kind of small int. So types have to be same as you might expect. Uh, and then I'm also going to let me try that again. So I'll have to refresh the remote schema once. So let me just reload that so that the type information is reloaded at the Hasura layer. And now I can see this. There you go. So now, because the types were same, I was able to create my relation uh, my relationship uh, easily. And because of the previous exercise, you might notice that we are Hasura is kind of doing a lot of validations and semantic checks to make sure uh, that the things that you're joining with are uh, valid. So the employees, uh, they have employee ID. And now you can see that they have something called my acting profile as well. And this has the actor ID and the first name and so on. And if I join that, if I run this, it's going to do a very complex join over the two uh, databases at the Hasura layer and kind of does a, does, it kind of looks like it's the same database, uh, although they are two different databases. So that's the power of remote joins, as we call it. And uh, and we saw how you can do that either with actions by bringing in a REST API and connecting that to a database table or via remote schemas to bring two different uh, uh, GraphQL services and join them. So I think that brings us to our time limit. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask them. Uh, and yeah, so thanks for attending the workshop and hope you learned uh, what Hasura does and how you can kind of use GraphQL in your environment or uh, how you can start using them in your next project and see the various features uh, with which you can kind of bring in uh, data sources that you have, maybe databases, REST APIs, or other GraphQL services. Thank you.